How Dupsy to SATA expansion cards work, and does my PC support them? I've recently been looking into getting a PSI to SATA expansion card, which I think is otherwise known as a port multiplier, which was the first result in Google when I searched for such an adapter. I need one because I no longer have any free SATA ports on my system, but I'm confused about how exactly these cards work and how I can determine whether my PC will support them. According to the above linked Wikipedia page, many common controllers do not support this feature, as it is not a requirement for a SATA controller. Elsewhere I've seen it implied that this means support comes down to the motherboard, and whether the SATA controller on the motherboard supports such expansion cards. However, port multipliers like the following work by connecting to the PSI port directly, why then would the card be subject to the motherboard's own implementation of SATA? Am I fundamentally misunderstanding how this technology works? If support for SATA port multipliers does boil down to the motherboard, how can I determine whether my motherboard supports them? My motherboard is an ASRock H61M HVS and supports SATA 2.0, 3GB slash S, but searching the manual for multiplier doesn't return any results. There are four basic levels of adding more SATA ports. A USB SATA adapter is cheap and easy, and quite fast with modern WASP, USB attached SCSI, support. However, they may not be good long term as many of them do not support trim and cheaper, 3.03.1 Gen 1, 5GB slash S, ones are still slightly slower than internal SATA 3.0, 6GB slash S. Additionally, you end up sharing USB bandwidth if you have multiple drives. The simpler ones only support 2.5 inches drives as they do not provide 12V power. These contain a built-in SATA controller, some docks support multiple ports slash drives. A SATA port multiplier is possibly the cheapest option, and effectively shares the bandwidth from a single upstream SATA port. These are not always supported and I would generally discourage using them unless absolutely necessary, i.e. the other options are unsuitable. Unless you can find documentation, often in a SATA controller spec sheet, and preferably also empirical evidence of support, you're better off avoiding port multipliers. These use, extend, the onboard controller. A SATA hover, also known as a SATA PSI card, is a reasonable option for adding small numbers of additional ports. These add an extra SATA controller via PSI, and do not interact with the onboard controller. Some also offer RAID but it's usually just a form of fake RAID and you're better off using pure software RAID. Look up the SATA controller model for more details. These are typically available in CX1 lane and up. The hardcore option is a SASPA. These are generally designed for enterprise uses and are typically more robust than SATA hoods. You may need a specialized cable, but you should be able to connect SATA drives with no issues. These additionally support SAS port multipliers, which are more reliable and better supported than their SATA counterparts. Again, look at the controller model for details, and be aware that many server OEMs rebadge them. Many also come with RAID, often hardware RAID, support. These tend to be CX4 slash X8 and up. Generally, for internal expansion, you are looking at either of the last two, in the form of a PC card. Plain SATA is usually cheaper, but if you cannot find one matching your needs, many ports, 6GB slash S speeds, etc., it may be worthwhile to look at a SAS one many of which are available second-hand on your favorite auction sites as companies replace older equipment. Keep in mind the cabling differences and PC lane requirements.
I've recently been looking into getting a PSE to SATA expansion card, otherwise known as a port multiplier, because I no longer have any free SATA ports on my system, but I'm confused about how exactly these cards work, and how I can determine whether my PC will support them. Your motherboard supports PC SATA expansion cards. Adding additional SATA ports through an expansion card connected to a PC lane only adds an additional SATA controller to the system. However, in order to boot from any disk connected to a PC SATA expansion card, it must specifically indicate that is supported. I've recently been looking into getting a PC SATA expansion card, otherwise known as a port multiplier, because I no longer have any free SATA ports on my system, but I'm confused about how exactly these cards work, and how I can determine whether my PC will support them. C SATA is often referred to as SATA Express, SATA, which of course, is an actual standard itself. Which should not be confused with eSATA, which is a different standard, to provide an interface for external SATA devices. Elsewhere I've seen it implied that this mean support comes down to the motherboard and whether the SATA controller on the motherboard supports such expansion cards. Like other SATA features, like hot swappable, support has to be supported by the SATA controller in addition to the device itself. See SATA expansion cards have their own SATA controller and are not limited by the SATA controller on the motherboard itself. However, port multipliers like the following work by connecting to the PC port directly. Why then would the card be subject to the motherboard's own implementation of SATA? Am I fundamentally misunderstanding how this technology works? Support would be subject to the expansion card SATA controller, not the motherboard SATA controller. Any limitation of the motherboard SATA controller would not be applicable to the expansion card. If support for SATA port multipliers does boil down to the motherboard, how can I determine whether my motherboard supports them? My motherboard is an ASRock H61M HBS and supports SATA 2.0, 3GB slash S, but searching the manual for multiplier doesn't return any results. The expansion card you link to is not a SATA port multiplier, it does not allow a single SATA port to connect to multiple SATA devices. However, those devices do exist and would require SATA data connected to the motherboard and power cables connected to the SU, which allows you to connect five SATA devices to the card. Since you say in your comment, I'm looking for extra SATA ports because I've run out of them on my motherboard. One solution to this, would be to use a SATA host bus adapter, which will expand your possible number of drives. There are many types of these, ranging from two ports upwards 16 on a single 8 lane card. It versus ear mode. If selecting up a card, you need to be aware of the two different modes. You want to have your APA card in Initiator Target Mode, IT, which basically says that the card will pass through any drives and present them to the operating system directly, no RAID hardware used, this is beneficial because the firmware usually is faster, and you get more control over the individual drives in software, your operating system slash disk software will handle the drives. Moreover, having a dumb controller like this, you ensure that the software you use will see everything the drives are doing. Air mode basically means that the card has a firmware that employ RAID functionality on card. This is risky since swapping out the RAID card if it breaks, is far from a trivial task. Assuming that you do not have AI 53350P CPU, which doesn't have internal graphics, you can use the C16 lanes for your PA card. But if you do have that, you need to use a discrete GFX card and you need to use the PC1 export. You have less options here, 
but a good start is to read about the SD Labs A390 card. Further reading. Flashing the cards from ear to it. Here are some names of manufacturers and their best offerings in my honest opinion LSI was bought by Avago, which was bought by Broadcom. LSI Mega Raid. LSI 920116i, I have one of these, pricey but very good. LSI 9228i, I have one of these, pricey but very good. IBM M1015, this card can be cross flashed to LSI 92118i it and is considered a good enthusiast card. Jamicron JMB363 Silicon Image SIL 3512 See SATA expansion card does not necessarily mean port multiplier. To put it differently, a PSI SATA expansion card is a PSI card that adds another, typically a C, host controller that provides SATA connectors, just like the AC controller on the mainboard. In the olden days, these were added to systems with only IPE controllers, and nowadays for devices that have too few SATA ports. Port multipliers are a totally different thing. You can think of them like USB hubs. One connector goes in and many connectors go out. They all have to share the upstream bandwidth, while PSI SATA expansion cards have the full bandwidth on each port. Port multipliers are not necessarily in the PSI expansion form factor, but there are different models that fit in a 3.5 inches slot. The ones that fit in a PSI slot usually do only mechanically, as they will have not the electrical contacts to the slot. 